so in a previous video lecture we have discussed about how to measure major diameter and minor diameter of uh, external and internal threads we can use uh, three types of micrometers simple micrometer batch micrometer or floating carriage micrometer for direct measurement of major diameter and minor diameter of threads external threads for internal threads we discuss about two indirect approaches one is preparation of mold because it is very much difficult to measure internal dimensions internal threads because they are not actually visible and for measurement we are using micrometer and as we know micrometer is not capable to do any internal measurement that's why using using uh, some molding material we are uh, we are getting mold of internal threads we are getting mold of this internal threads and then on this mold we can do now all the external measurements using micrometer so in this way we can measure my uh, major diameter of internal thread and we discuss about these two methods one is using taper parallels and using rollers for minor diameter of internal threads in the previous video now today we are going to discuss about how to measure effective or pitch or mean diameter of screw thread these all three are same effective pitch and mean diameters this task is more challenging because effective diameter is not physically present on screw thread it's a imaginary diameter actually because during discussion of uh, screw thread terminology we had discuss about effective diameter effective diameter is present on pitch line pitch line itself a imaginary line and location of pitch line is such that the length of thread and length of space between two threads that is seen in the location of pitch line and that length of thread or length of space is equals to half of the pitch of the screw that is what the location so with that basic terminology we are starting now how to measure effective diameter of screw thread so here again two methods are there one is direct method and set and set of three indirect methods very first direct method is thread micrometer method in previous video for measurement of minor diameter of external thread we have discussed about v pieces so similarly here also you can see for particular standard thread different sets of v pieces are available for example here you can see two v pieces this is one v piece and second is pair of v piece with some recess portion so for particular standard thread this type of pairs are available so this v pieces we need to attach on anvils of micrometer this recessed v space v piece that is connected to fixed anvil and this one is connected to spindle movable anvil of micrometer and they make contact perfectly they they fits into the space between two threads and then micrometer gives us direct reading but if your thread is having any error in the helix angle 
or form of thread, then this method will give you wrong value. This thread micrometer method will give you wrong value. And that's why we need to go for some indirect approaches. In this indirect approaches, one wire method, two wire method, and three wire methods are there. Out of this three, best one is a three wire method. One wire method is full of error and it is not popular in measurement. That's why I will not be discussing one wire method because in industries mostly two wire methods and three wire methods are used. So that's why we are ignoring explanation of how to use one wire method for effective diameter measurement. Here, if you look, one relation is given that is related to thread micrometer method. If you are doing measurement by this type of pair of V pieces, then that reading should match with this equation reading. What this equation stands for? This equation stands for use of simple outside micrometer means if you use simple outside micrometer then instead of this V pieces they are having flat angles. So those flat angles actually make contact at the crest on both the side. So this D stands for major diameter of external thread. Then D is major diameter of external thread minus 0 0.6403 is generally depth of British thread and into pitch of particular thread. So here this pitch is variable. If you are doing measurement for any screw thread, then pitch value is known. You can put this as a pitch value. Then using outside micrometer, you can measure major diameter of external thread and get value of capital D and find out pitch diameter. This pitch diameter should match with pitch diameter reading got using this type of V pieces. This is about cross verification. So this standard equation is used for cross verification whether thread micrometer is giving the uh, giving us correct value or not. Now we are starting next indirect methods for effective diameter measurement that is two wire map. So here you can see uh, two sets of diagram what we are doing here, here again we are using simple floating carriage micrometer with flat annuals. So these are the two micrometer annuals. But as name says, it's two wire method. Here we are using two identical wires which are hardened and lapped. So these are accurate wires. In floating carriage micrometer, this type of set of wires are available which can fit in the in the uh, space of thread okay so diameter of these two wires which are same is small d diameter of these two wires are equals to small d so these two wires we are putting in space in the opposite space and then after using floating carriage micrometer which is having flat angles we are measuring this diameter over wires so here you can see this capital m is diameter over wires so from this end to this end of wire capital m okay and here you can see this capital e stands for pitch diameter or effective diameter or we can say mean diameter E. So this, this is your pitch line on both these sides. Now what we are doing, if you see the second diagram, then the second diagram is the close view of this much of portion only. It's a close view of this much of portion. So that is shown here. So this circle stands for one wire diameter. So same circle is represented here. So this circle stands for wire of diameter small d. So close view is given. Now we'll apply some trigonometry to find out value of effective diameter capital E. 
Now again look here. Same two values M and E. They are written here. Diameter M. So from this end to opposite end, which is not indicated in this close view, but actually it's a diameter over wire. Capital M is diameter over both the wires. So these two arrows they are indicating continuous dimensioning. This end is not indicated. This end is not indicated in this second image, which is representing close view of one wire only. Okay. So this capital M. Now this line BC, line BC stands for pitch line, which is indicated here by chain line. So this line BC is indicating pitch line. And this point B and C are intersecting point between pitch line and two flanks of two flanks of thread. Then length BC is equal to how much? As I told you, space length and thread length on pitch line is equal to half the pitch. Then this line BC is equal to pitch by two, which is written here. Line BC is equals to pitch by two. So here small p is used to indicate pitch. Okay. Now you can see here if I want to find out effective diameter E, then effective diameter E is equals to diameter T. Diameter T is diameter under wires. So diameter T plus two times a q. In this di uh, diagram, you can see because AQ on one wire on this side, similar AQ is present on this second wire. So that's why overall diameter, effective diameter is equal to diameter T plus two times AQ. Okay. Now, how to find T? So here you can see E is equal to T plus two times AQ. So two times a q is represented by capital P in this equation. So we want to find out this effective diameter E. Okay. Now in in this equation, this P representing two times a q. So using trigonometry, we'll find relation of a q. So this is the derivation of same that we'll see later. But how to find T? Then T is equals to actually, if you look this T, then T is equals to M overall diameter over wire minus one time diameter of wire small d on one side. Similarly, the second wire is also having same diameter d on the other side. So that's why T is equals to M diameter over wire capital M minus two times diameter of wires on both the side which is same so that's why t is equals to m minus 2d so as i told you we get this capital m diameter over wire using floating carriage micrometer so this is what the dia uh, diagram indicating that floating carriage micrometer which i have shown in previous uh, video lecture also so that you can refer and uh, Please also refer one link is given in the description of uh, this video. Try to open that link. There you will find one another video in which use of floating carriage micrometer is demonstrated. So that will give you clear idea how floating carriage micrometer is used along these two wire methods to find out effective diameter. Okay. So again, now get back to the topic. So T is equals to capital M minus 2D, where capital M is measured using floating carriage micrometer. D is diameter of wire, which is already known to us. So we get this capital T based on uh, micrometer reading. Then after effective diameter E is equals to T, T plus P as per this diagram. So T is already calculated based on previous step so t is known now plus p now p representing two times a q a q on this side on one wire and similar a q is present on the other side on the second wire 
so actually this t is representing two times aq because one time aq is only radius if you take second time aq on second wire then that will give you diameter so now next derivation is to find out this length aq so if you look here as i told you bc is equals to half the pitch because it's a, it's a space length on pitch line so it's a half the pitch then after if you look here op to find op if you consider this triangle right angle triangle if you look this triangle because this line oe is line joining center of wire to the contact point of wire with the flank of the which is perpendicular line okay because you know if you take any radial line from circle then that would be perpendicular okay to the tangent and here this thread flank is tangent to y so you get one right angle triangle and this x by 2 is the half thread angle or it is also called as a flank angle as per our terminology please refer a video on terminology of thread that will give you this understanding so when we are inspecting any thread its thread angle is given to us we will also today discuss how to measure thread angle of uh, screw thread so this x value is known to you this thread angle is known to you so this is one right angle triangle oep if you apply cosec x by 2 then cosec x by 2 is equals to op op hypotenuse divided by opposite side oe now what is oe oe is radius of wire diameter of wire is small d then radius oe is equals to d by 2 so, if, so that's why op is equals to d by 2 cosec x by 2 now we got o op now next is p you want to find out this then again just consider this right angle triangle c q p triangle c q p and apply uh, this p a this p a is actually equals to this p is equals to overall length o p from o p u to minus o a then that will give you a p or p a so o p is already a relation for op we got here which is d by 2 cosec x by 2 and what is oa how much this oa is oa is nothing but representing radius of wire again which is d by 2 so if you take difference between op minus oa then that will give you pa so that's why pa is equals to d by 2 is taken as a common then you get d by 2 in bracket cosec x by 2 minus 1 so this is how we got relation for p a now next is how to get p q now to get this p q consider right angle triangle c q p and apply cot x by 2 then cot x by 2 is equals to P Q divided by Q C. Then Q C is nothing but half of B C. We know B C is equals to half of pitch. Then Q C is equals to again half of this. Then you get P by four. So here you got P by four cot x by two as P Q. Now we got P Q. We got this P Q from pq minus this pa then you get qa so that's why qa is equals to pq minus ap we have both the relations these two relations then take that difference so we got this okay so we got aq now but actual p is twice the aq so that's why p is equals to two times aq we have aq relation just multiply by two then here instead of 4 now you will get p by 2 cot x by 2 
minus 2 to cancel out then d cos x x by 2 minus 1 so this is how we got this p okay because now p is depending on what flank uh, that uh, flank angle this x by 2 is called as a flank angle or x is called as a thread angle which is already known minus d d is what wire diameter which you have selected for measurement so p is function of wire diameter and thread angle so this relation you need to use now so this will give you value of p in this equation p is already calculated based on the measured di uh, diameter over wires using micrometer so in this way you can find out effective diameter of thread which is actually imaginary diameter which is not present on thread and that's why it is very difficult task to do that i suggest please refer description of this video and open link of demonstration of floating carriage micrometer for effective diameter measure okay now in next slide you can see three wire method what is basic difference between three wire methods and two wire methods here you can see in two wire methods we have only two opposite wires but if you are using two opposite wires then it is very difficult to orient micrometer anvils perfectly parallel clear if only two wires are there then due to rolling it may happen you get one one anvil i am just demonstrating you to uh, to drawing one anvil you may get the face of one anvil you may get like this and similarly the other face you may get like this so in this way you get this diameter which is wrong as per the abbs principle of alignment so for proper alignment what we are doing we are providing here one another wire of same diameter so instead of two sets of wire now you are having three set of wire all three are having same diameter so due to this sec uh, due to this third wire means second wire on the same side this anvil of micrometer that will be properly aligned and you get only dimension you get dimension like this only perfectly perpendicular dimension this red line not this maroon line clear yeah? so that is what the benefit of this three wire method otherwise derivation is same as this in reference book and textbook some different derivation is given but no need to refer it because anyway you will be getting this type of arrangement on wires so that's why you need not to refer separate derivation for three wire method and now here's the same same arrangement is indicated look here these are the two and uh, two anvils flat anvils of uh, floating carriage micrometer this is your thread whose pitch diameter you want to measure and these are the two wire uh, three wires two wires on one side and one wire on the other side and this reading which you are getting using uh micrometer that is uh, that is that is this capital m this capital m you get using floating carriage micrometer and after getting m you find first of all capital t which is equals to m minus 2 times d d small d is diameter of wire and then after you use this previous relation look here ah, you get t after t you use this relation t plus p t is already known from this equation and p is equals to this equation where d is diameter of wire which you have used here which is already known to you so in this way you can find out effective diameter of any screw thread using floating carriage micrometer and three wires okay so this is about how to find out effective diameter these are the indirect methods now based wire size see so far we have talk about you know, to take any wire but here three different cases are indicated 
for same thread for same thread profile you see if diameter of wire is large then that is make contact somewhere here this line indicating pitch line so so if you are using large wire di uh, wire diameter then they are making contact that wire making contact on the flank of thread above pitch line if you are using less diameter of wire then the wire making contact with the flank of thread below pitch line and if you are using best wire then that is making contact at pitch line if you look these are the contact points between wire and flank of flanks of thread then these two contact points they are exactly on pitch line you get this if you now i'm just showing you what is the variation if you use based wire size means based wire size is a wire size which if you use then contact points will be exactly on the pitch line if you do that then see in the previous equation see these are the contact points when wire diameter is large then this d and e are the contact point which are above pitch line but if you use best wire size then this d and e overlap on b and c because b and c that indicates pitch line location so as per best wire size size of wire is such that contact between wire and flanks of thread that may uh, that is made exactly on pitch line so you get d is overlap on b and e is overlap on c if it happens then means what if that happens then that would give you more perfection in the result okay so that is what called as a best wire size so here you can see now derivation of best wire size means how to find out diameter of best wire small d in this relations we have used small d so how to find out small d so that wire make contact exactly at point b and c that is our next uh, next task so you can see that same same view so this is the profile thread profile sorry this is the thread profile and then we have we have considered a based wire size then these are the two contact points these are the two contact points which are exactly on pitch line then you know this diameter is called as a effective diameter on pitch line now we want to find out diameter of based wire then op is called as a radius of based wire and if you just consider length on this contact points then that is equals to half of the pitch then length of ap is equals to you can see here it's a, again half of half of the pitch then you get p by 4 as similar derivation we have seen in the three wire method or two wire method so you are already familiar now so that's why if you if you first of all now here the change is uh, please bear with the diagram here we have consider x by 2 and in this diagram we consider x so please bear with that here this x is representing half angle similarly in this diagram this x by 2 is representing that angle so both are here same if i call this as a theta then here theta is equals to x by 2 and here theta is equals to x okay so please consider this similarity in the graphical representation now if this is x then you get one right angle triangle here which is which is uh, o p to this end let us call this end as a o dash so this end is o dash this end is o dash okay so uh, if you consider one right angle triangle o p o dash then this angle is x which is flank angle in previous diagram uh, flank angle was given as x by 2 so 
So there X was used to uh, indicate uh, thread angle. Here X is used to indicate flank angle or half of the thread angle. Yeah. So here now, if this is X, then what is this angle? This would be 90 minus X as per the law of right angle triangle because this is this is 90 this is x then remaining angle is 19 min, uh, 19 minus x so this angle is 19 minus x now just consider one another triangle one another right angle triangle which is oap which is oap which is written here oap so then sin poa this angle sin poa is equals to ap opposite side divided by hypotenuse op so that is what written here ap divided by op so sin 90 minus x is equals to ap divided by op then op is equals to ap divided by sin 90 minus x now what is ap ap is written here it is p by 4 where small p is pitch of 3 so that is uh, here ap divided by now sin 90 minus x is converted into cos x so ap sec x is equals to op now what is it sorry sorry this ap is the projected length now here uh, since ap is equals to look here we, uh, this we got as a op this relation we got as a op now AP is equals to P by 4, P by 4 sec, which is written here, AP is equals to P by 4. Then, now based wire diameter, based wire diameter is OP. Based wire diameter is OP. Now AP is P by 4, then just write here P by 4. Then we got this relation DB, based wire size diameter is equals to P by 4 sec x which is only AP uh, sorry OP so OP is equals to P by 4 OP is equals to P by 4 sec x but OP represents only radius V1 diameter then DB is equals to, to multiply by 2 so this OP so 2 DB is equals to 2 times OP and OP is equals to P by 4 sec x then 2 p by 4 sec x then final derivation is p by 2 sec x but please mind well this x stands for here flank angle or we can say half of the thread angle okay so this is how you can find you got relation of this wire size so now i want to inspect if any thread with the pitch is equals to 1.5 mm and thread angle is suppose 30 mm then I need to use this derivation. So pitch is 1.5 divided by 2 and sec 30 degree. Then you get diameter of based wire. If you use that diameter wire, then that will make exactly contact on the pitch line. Okay, so that is what the use of this derivation. So in using this derivation, you can find out based wire size, based wire diameter. Now we move further. So this is about how to find out effective diameter and how to select based wire size for that. Now next is about toolmaker's microscope. You have already used toolmaker microscope during our laboratory session. That uh, for uh, measurement of thread angle. So what is actual principle of toolmaker microscope? Here you are having one transparent table. On that you put threaded workpiece from the bottom light source come so whatever the object you have placed you have placed here threaded component so shadow of the threaded component will be observed from this eyepiece and from this eyepiece if you get a uh, shadow of threaded profile then using this micrometer heads you can move this table to and fro and here you are, you are having cross line graticule then using that cross line graticule you can do any measurement any linear measurement so you can measure pitch of thread and suppose if I want to measure angle of thread then you then this table can also rotate and that rotation angle can be 
can be find out using uh, one one year bevel protector scale given on this table of toolmaker microscope so toolmaker microscope is used for linear and angular measurement on small threaded workpiece that is what the application of toolmaker microscope and you have already use it in our laboratory so you are all uh, you are used to with the application of tool maker for thread metal so we are not discussing more on that we have also seen this type of uh, thread gauges for pitch measurement so thread gauges they are having set of threaded strips whose pitch values are already mentioned on each and every strip so you can match any uh, any threaded strip with the unknown thread and you can find out roughly pitch of unknown thread this is about how to measure thread angle by indirect approach direct approach is you can use tool maker microscope but second is indirect approach miscellaneous method for that then already you learned this type of method in uh, angular measurement so this is your thread profile i want to find out this theta by 2 uh, suppose if i want to find a thread angle then theta is thread angle and theta by 2 is a flank angle so here theta by 2 is a flank angle now what you need to do you need to use two wires with different diameters one is having diameter small d1 and second is having diameter small d2 so for, first of all what you need to do you need to use floating carriage micrometer here again so this is your threaded profile put first of all one small diameter wire whose diameter is d1 <coughs> and center is o1 so you can see this circle and using floating carriage micrometer find out uh, this distance diameter over wire using floating carriage micrometer so you get this d1 distance of this top of uh, wire from opposite side thread crest aisa hi threaded crest iske opposite side pe hoga for if if i uh, show you suppose this is your threaded profile similar threaded profile you may get on the other side then you put only one wire on this side and then after you use micrometer anvils one micrometer anvil on this side and second micrometer anvil that make contact on the crest it is this wrong placement so second anvil will be making contact on crest like this so these are the this rectangle is indicating micrometer angles and this circle is indicating wire diameter d1 okay so in this way you get d so here what is d this distance is d d1 capital d1 so we got this d1 like this now what we do we replace this small d1 wire with another wire with diameter d2 and we do again same we find out d2 so we got this two uh, this two dimensions over wire dimension over wire using micrometer so this capital d1 and capital d2 is known to you this small d2 and small d1 they are the wire diameters they are also known to you because you have used it for measurement now if you look here you get one one right angle triangle here right angle triangle how right angle triangle if you just uh, consider o2 o2 is the center of large wire then if you draw a line which is connecting o2 with the contact point then you get this line similar line you can imagine if you draw from o1 center to the contact point like this see here uh, let me show you this line so this both the lines they are parallel to each other this o2 line this line from o2 this line is parallel to this line then how much this 
let me write let me give text to this point which is capital a suppose so this point is capital a this point is capital a then o22 a is how much that is equals to this diameter d1 if you minus this d1 half of the d1 half of the d1 from this which is half of d2 then d2 by 2 minus d1 by 2 is equals to o22 a now apply sine theta by 2 is equals to o22 a divided by this hypotenuse which is center distance between two wires o22 o1 now how much o22 o1 if you just find out distance of center o2 from this angle from this angle then i take d2 capital d2 minus small d2 by 2 small d2 by 2 so capital d2 minus small d2 by 2 you get distance of o2 from opposite angle this angle similarly distance of o1 how much distance of o1 from the opposite angle or uh, this opposite crest that is capital d1 minus small d1 by 2 half of the this diameter clear so in this way you get difference as if you simplify that equation you will get d2 minus d1 minus d2 minus d1 as this this o2 to o1 okay so you get this denominator and d2 minus d1 as i discussed it is o2 to a distance okay so in that way you get sine theta by 2 d2 minus d1 you get this relation and in this relation you know all four quantities d2 d1 capital d2 capital d and please please do one correction i have wrongly indicated uh, this d1 uh, capital d1 and capital d2 diameter actually they are please make one correction there we use pair of wires so uh, on the opposite side also same identical wire is present in the gap so this is the wire and you are having one another anvil so setup is like this and that's why here we are considering d1 d2 and diameter d2 so this is how we got this relation okay. so actual d1 and d2 they are this diameter over wires we are using two wires not one wire okay so in this way you can find out thread angle using indirect effort but as i told you if you are using tool maker microscope then you need not to use this indirect approach okay so that's it from a thread metrology we have discussed about how to measure thread angle how to measure pitch using tool maker microscope you have already measured thread angle and pitch length in laboratory session using tool maker microscope we have also discussed about methods to measure major diameter minor diameter and effective diameter of internal as well as external thread. so here we are ending this lecture series on thread metrology